Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be continuing work on the 1960 Boland's Ridematic, and we will be working today uh, on the drive system again. More specifically, we'll be having a look at this front sprocket. Today we're a bit challenged for space in the workshop because we've got a lot of different uh, projects and equipment bits in here at the moment, but the good thing is that we have the 1962 Bowling's Ridermatic in here, uh, which is very muddy at the moment, but at least we can make some comparisons with some of the parts on that track to see how they're set up. And we've also cleaned up the pathway uh, to kind of go down there to access the hydraulic press parts washer, our kind of trolley of ridematic parts and anything else that we need down there and a lot of those uh, tools or parts that I've just said will come in useful for today's video. Now having rebuilt the differential in some of the previous videos and having uh, done some repair work to the gear on this end of the kind of drive system the next thing to move on to would be the kind of idler tensioner pulley. Now there's many problems with this uh, as it is at the moment. There's some kind of weird lumps of weld or something there that shouldn't be there. Massive amounts of wear on two of the three uh, kind of idler positions here. They should all look like the one on the end but these have just been worn down massively. Uh, there should be a snap ring holding them on there and you can kind of see the groove uh, from when that was there but clearly that got lost and a previous owner has just uh, put a washer behind the grease nipple to hold it on instead which means it's got acres of end float that it shouldn't have uh, it also has the wrong bolts on it so that's not original and probably the worst part is if you listen to this feels and sounds absolutely horrible trying to turn that. So if we were to try and refurbish this one, it would probably be quite a lot of work to get this into a working state. However, uh, one of our Boland's buddies in the UK actually lets know that he had one of these sitting on his shelf. So that is uh, coming our way now. So thank you, Chris. And that's got the proper bolts and solves a lot of the issues that we have with this one. Now when that comes we'll try and make uh, at least one good one for this tractor and see if we can kind of take what's left part wise, parts wise and possibly make one up for our parts uh, chassis tractor because that didn't actually have an idler tensioner pulley on it at all. But anyway since we can't do anything on that today because the one from Chris has not arrived yet uh, we will be moving even further forward to focus on this pulley here which has three bolts mounting it to the chassis there and you can see Boland's uh, lazy painting on the chassis there where they clearly had this bolted on before they painted it and you can even see the gear marks from the sprocket where it's blocked the paint gun. We have this part on the bench now and we've put some paper down just so we can see a bit better and also so we don't lose any small parts now I looked at the assembly of this on the manual and it doesn't look too difficult although we haven't taken one of these apart before so we will see. Anyway some observations we've made before we take this apart. Um, there's quite a bit of up and down movement there as it kind of floats along the shaft uh, on this flywheel part. However we would kind of expect that because as the Versamatic uh, pulleys kind of get closer together and the belt moves, uh, this will need to kind of float and move with the belt. So that is understandable. What's not understandable is if I hold the sprocket on the bottom, uh, the amount of movement on this top flywheel part 
these are meant to be joined together uh, by a Woodruff key in there that means that they move at the same time. So hopefully it's just the Woodruff key is really worn and we can replace that and it should uh, get rid of a decent amount of that wear. Now, first thing to do to take this apart is get this E-clip off. can be difficult um, but that is very worn actually you can kind of see a big step on all three parts of the e-clip that kind of tuck under there so if we've got a spare one of those um, we will need to replace that I'll put the washer with it now I should be able to pull um, both the sprocket and flywheel part together off the shaft there. Wish that was smell of vision because uh, that absolutely stinks, probably the old grease and stuff. But in there you can actually see the needle bearing on that side. Not sure if the lighting's good enough, but there you go. Needle bearing in there. And there's another one in, in this end too. We'll be replacing both of those. However, they both seem to be kind of inset and not flush with the end. Not sure if that's how they're meant to be, so we'll check the manual again. That's just a bit of an interesting observation there. What I will do now though, is separate these two parts using this circlet here. I not a clue what happened there, but it's off, and at least it's not broken. And I'm lifting that off, and that comes off very easily, which is not especially what you want when it's got a keyway in it. There you can see the old um, key, which is very worn in there by the looks of it. You can kind of see the movement of it side to side. So hopefully that'll be something easy for us to um, fix up and clearly we've got a lot of cleaning up to do on these uh, kind of few parts too. We're now using a blind bearing puller and that is to get out the needle bearings that are in here. Uh, main reason for doing this is the fact that we don't want to put this in a vise uh, because there's no kind of safe surfaces to grip on and we don't want to damage the gears. Uh, on here and the teeth on the gears by putting that in a vise. So at the moment as I'm turning this, it is pulling this um, needle bearing out of there. getting easier? Not especially. There we go, and that, you can tell when that just uh, went. And then you can see that's pulled out the needle bearing nicely. The sides of that actually look quite nice. So all we've got to do now is release this one, uh, turn it over and do the same with the needle bearing on the other end of this. Now we struggled with our blind bearing puller trying to get the bearing out of the other end because there's not really anything to put these uh, kind of pusher parts against. So instead of doing that method, we got two sockets, uh, one being this really wide one and uh, a super long um, impact socket there. This one we kind of put on here, then turned this over, put this up against the bearing in there like that, then used the hydraulic press to push that out. And as you can see by the fact that we've got two needle bearings sitting there, 
uh, that method worked quite well and we managed to get that out. Now we have these completely dismantled uh, because we took the other circlip off of there. And on this, we took the grease nipple off and put an airline uh, in there to blow all of the grease out of this hole. So that's all clean uh, in there. And we also took off the Woodruff key, which is in absolutely horrible shape. You can kind of see the step in that. So what we're gonna do now is clean up these three major parts uh, using the parts washer. And we'll be back with you in just a second. And hopefully we'll have some cleaner bits of metal. Absolutely ages later now. And we have cleaned up all of these parts. So we've got our three clean parts here. And we've also got some new parts uh, to replace some of the worn or uh, otherwise lost items. So we've got new spring washers here, uh, new wood rough key, new e-clip, a new um, grease nipple, and the new needle bearings, which I will just quickly open one of these up uh, to show you. There you go. And that's the same size as the old ones. We have all of the old parts lined up here, and as you can tell, they're still uh, dirty because there's no point cleaning stuff up that's destined for the bin. However, you may have noticed um, that there's no um, grease nipple sitting here, which is what I meant by otherwise missing, because somewhere along the line we've actually lost the old one, but that's fine because we said for this tractor we're going to replace all of the grease nipples anyway, so there's a new one uh, to replace that there. Now everything else we're reusing and we've cleaned everything up nicely and we've decided to put this back together we're going to build it up on the tractor so that will start with this being bolted on a chassis about there uh, reusing the old bolts but with the new spring washers so we will just do that now. So we have the first part fitted up now and we've put the first washer on there too just so that we don't forget that that's meant to go on there. Now we did have a choice of kind of what way round we would put this on in terms of the um, grease hole, but we thought uh, when the temperatures start to rise, uh, the grease will kind of run away from the point that it's coming out of. And it made more sense to us um, to think that we'd be topping it up from the top then rather than the bottom. So that's why we uh, put that on the top rightly or wrongly. But the next thing we need to do is push the new needle bearings into um, this part here. And we had a look through our bushing pusher uh, kind of tools. And we've got this one, which we used when we did the steering rebuild on one of our Bowlands HT23s. And that fits in there absolutely perfectly. It's almost as if we made it for the job. Now, when we did that steering rebuild, we used a kind of draw bolt but for this we're going to stick this in the hydraulic press and push both of these needle bearings in. We have the parts set up in the press now and you can see we've kind of got it off center and that's because the bottom part of our uh, press kind of pushing part here is quite badly damaged so having it offset is the best way to have it in there flat so at some point we're going to have to take this press apart and probably just lop a bit off the bottom um, so that we have a straight edge again but until then this will do so i will now start to press this in and my cameraman will kind of steady it as it starts to go in the first bit hopefully it should sort of line itself up and not go in in a strange way or anything We flip this over now and we're going to do the same thing with this one. Uh, we did notice actually on each end of this, there's a small taper, which is why we're kind of going a bit past the end so that the bearing stops and kind of sits beyond the taper so it doesn't have a gap around the outside of it. And 
got nearly at the bottom of this one already, but we'll go a bit past uh, the bottom, kind of about there, and now let this up, and this should be the second one in place. Yep, there you go. We've decided that we're going to make up the rest of this part off the tractor, and that's because uh, we think it'll be easier for two of us to kind of hold the woodruff key and push this pulley part on at the same time and we can only really do that while that's off the tractor but what we have just done is uh, kind of gone around and tested the needle bearings to make sure they turn perfectly still after being pressed in and they do so that's good next thing to go on is one of these circlips so i'll just grab one of these here and get this readjusted on here. And that has to go down to the bottom slot. And I can't tell if I've got that seated. Yep, I've got that seated fine. So that circle up is now on there. That's kind of a buffer thing for this pulley part. Now, uh, what me and my cameraman are now going to do is cut there. Uh, one of us will hold the woodruff key while the other one uh, tries to line this up and push this pulley part on. So we will come back to you in just a minute with this hopefully fitted. We have the pulley part fitted now and uh, as you can see there's almost no movement between them now so that's good and we still retained the uh, kind of up and down movement that we think we need to cut for the pulley to kind of uh, move with the versamatic but we did actually make it more difficult for ourselves by oiling um, the shaft before we put that on uh, which made it more difficult to try and pin the wood rough key down but, but it means that this can easily slide backwards and forwards to move with the versamatic now we'll put this onto the tractor and we've greased uh, this shaft up too, so this should go on pretty easily. There we go, fully on. Now I put the kind of wash, washer back on, on there, and the new E clip we've got on here too. I'll just use a pair of pliers to get these on. get this on there we go that is that fixed on now so we're happy um, with that and I will also just put the new grease nipple in which I think is the last thing that we need to do on this So you may have noticed uh, the thread on that wasn't the best, it was kind of slipping a bit. So we took this off and replaced it with a different grease nipple and used a ring spanner this time to get a better feel of the thread as it was going on and we're happy with how that is. So that is another part done on this tractor and something we are realising is just how much time we're spending cleaning up. Uh, all of the small parts like this even though we spent absolutely ages on that at the start of the project but clearly we're having to do that as we keep going through as well obviously next time or whenever we get uh, the tensioner part we can then uh, check how the chain is uh, do any work needed on that and connect all of that up and then that will be a lot more of the drive system all connected up but that is it for this video, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.